Hello, welcome back to SmartHelping.com. Uh, here today I've done some logic for a monthly periodic discounted cash flow analysis. Um, I think it's really useful and you're going to see why after I go through and explain how it works and the difference between doing um, monthly versus an annual and what changes and, and why it's important. So this is just a template. It's I've built it designed to... Um, fit basically any model that has monthly cash flows from beginning to end it can go for up to 10 years up to 120 uh, periods and i've also made the chart and everything dynamic so if you put number of periods here down to 60 you can see the chart only goes to 60 months now i see october 2024 actually let's move this over a little bit so you can see So if I go 120, it's going to extend. And the main benefit here is you can take this and plop it into any model. You just literally copy the entire sheet, copy, get your model up, paste it in. And then all you got to do is reference your monthly cash flows into this column here. Put in how many periods you're doing the analysis for, your discount rate, and the start month. That's it. And then you'll get all this, all of these uh, metrics. So what it's going to do is show you your cumulative cash flow, bank balance, with the assumption that the cash needed is based on the minimum uh, cash flow of operations. Well, this is essentially your cash flow before any equity is invested or contributions, distributions. Um, and then we have present value and cumulative discounted cash flow value. So based on all of this, you can see what happens over time for 10, up to 10 years. Uh, now, it's on a monthly basis, so it's a little bit tricky. You have to have a monthly discount rate, which is normally people are used to entering an annual, so that's why they made, made the input. And then that's um, a formula is done to put that into a monthly basis. And then that's used to figure out what the actual um, discounted value is on a given month rather than a year. Um, you've got present value future cash flows. Based on that, the net present value, which is just taking the present value of the future cash flows minus um, the total initial investment, which we are defaulting to the minimum cash needed. So right now it's saying over the course of time, the minimum cash needed is 3,025,000. That will ensure that um, the company does not run out of money based on the expected cash flows. Uh, total cash returned is just all the positive cash flows months. Net cash returned is, and this is including if you say had a month, um, a negative month way in the future, um, then obviously you're not going to, like let's say you had minus like 800,000 here. So this is going to raise up your min cash needed a bit, and it's going to do all the calculations here to ensure you're not double counting cash in or anything gets messed up there. Uh, so total cash returned, net cash return is essentially your profit or what is actually, let's say you put in uh, 3.5, you get back 4.4, net net you made 800,000, that's an ROI of 22%. Equity multiple 1.2. Put another decimal on that. And equity multiple just means anything over one means you've got a positive return. Whatever it might be. I've just put in random values here just to show kind of a just general. Uh, so you can see what it looks like with numbers in it. Um, and then I've got a nice chart here. Cumulative value of discounted uh, cash flow versus actual cash flow. So you can see the discounted value, you're getting less and less value over time because of time value of money. And the regular cash flow is just whatever it ends up being. And this is cumulative. So this is the ending value here is actually, you see it says um, negative 1.4. It's essentially saying that um, there's actually never a, a present value that's above zero. Let's see if we lower the initial 
cash out lay down a bit to like 12 say 120,000 now you can see how it goes positive so this positive number at 1.4 is saying um, that's the total net present value and this is showing you the net present value at every month over time and it just levels off because over time you know the further out the cash is the less value it gets so you stop you get less and less incremental improvement the regular cash flow just goes up uh, based on whatever the cash is now here's the reason why it can be beneficial to do a monthly analysis over an annual if you are an investor or you're going to start this business with zero money and you're concerned with when cash is going to be required um, and it could be important as if you're doing a business that has a lot of cash outlays in the first, you know, two to four years, um, let's say real estate development is like that, or, uh, maybe some business that you're scaling out that has requires a lot of CapEx in the first uh, few years, meaning that you will have cash outlays that happen based on whatever your strategy is. And depending on if those cash that cash is needed at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year, or vice versa, that's going to affect your return because you know if you have to come up with a million dollars by the end of, um, let's say in 24 months versus in 14 months, you know it's still both of those cash flows will come out in the same year, which would be, I don't even know what I said. I think year two. Let's say you had, let's go tw month 23 versus month uh, 15, um, just so you get the point. So on a, if you're looking on an annual basis, that all happens netted out together and happens in one period. But if, if you have all that cash actually needs to happen in like month 15, um, then that's a lot sooner than, you know, eight months later in month uh, 23 or, you know, later. That will affect... Um, the time value of the cash flows and the annual does not capture that difference. You can see I put um, an annual summary here as well as over here. So you, if you just want to copy and paste all this, you can get all the val the annual and monthly view all in one sheet without having to do any reference um, changes. Or um, I also did another separate tab for annual to show the you know, just a separate if you want to analyze it that way. But if I were to go, let's say I went and tried to figure out internal rate of return. Let's say I did it on uh, based on the annual cash flows. It's going to be 153%. But what we're actually seeing is an annual IRR of 187%. So it's the annual is actually a bit lower because my guess is the cash flows is just there's. Um, more coming back sooner and the annual is not capturing that now if we were let's see just to prove that the math is working here if I take the annual internal return the result of all this and plug it into the discount rate in theory that should make the net present value zero because the definition of, of IRR is the percentage discount rate that makes the future cash flows equal to the initial investment or the net present value zero same thing because net present value is the present value of the future cash flows minus the cash needed so if i paste that into here this should make the present value say 145 145,000, and this should say zero now we're at 120 oh 120 because we're saying that um, month zero is the actual, um, as far as the, the discounted cash flow analysis goes, month zero is what's the initial investment, even though there's multiple negative months here. And there's no way to, because I there's no way to know if a company has one or two or three or however many negative initial startup months to do the discounting. So to make it make sense, this has to assume that month zero is going to be the initial present value that's measured. Well, it's going to be what the net present value is um, derived from. So, 
and normally, like, say, nine times out of ten, it's going to be the case that the first month, this is where all the cash is coming out um, and where it enters. But if not, that's okay. In future cash flows, if they are negative, can be discounted. They're just less. And it's the same way. You just add them up the same exact way. They affect the present value in the same way. Um, but the way net present value is designed to work is it's taking um, the present value of everything that happens in the future against the first period. That's, I guess, the bit, most basic definition if you're just looking at it like that. So, um, and that's probably another reason why people use an annual basis, but with the annual basis, you don't get the granularity and the percentages can be different. So I think this is actually uh, a pretty important analysis to run depending on exactly what kind of business is um, being analyzed here. Because you will get different numbers for the internal rate of return, which is a huge metric. And the internal rate of return is very closely related to this kind of cash flow. Because it's literally the number, the percentage that results in making the net present value zero. And in uh, this kind of cash flow analysis, you're mainly looking at the net present value of the project. So this is super high, 187%. It's basically saying you have to dis discount these cash flows a lot to get it to equal the initial negative cash flow. And, you know, that's a pretty good thing. Let's say we have the discount rate at 24%. Well, net present value 1.4 means that the value of those cash flow, if you're in essentially the discount rate, you're applying to a business is how risky you think it is. So you put it higher if you think it's more risky, lower if you think it's less risky. And if the net present value is positive and you're happy with whatever percentage you put in here as a risk measure, then you know the project should be a go. And that's kind of how net present value is used is you're trying to figure out if the net present value is, is positive or not. And that heavily relies on your assumption about the risk of the cash flows, which is quantitatively measured in your discount rate for the discount of cash flow. Now, um, I actually spent quite a bit of time on this, putting together the formatting and all the calculations and doing the monthly. So this will be a mid-level model, which is my lowest price one at $45 if you want it. Um, I We'll put a link in the description box below if you're on YouTube to get to it, but you can buy it at smarthelping.com. Put the link right here. And I'll probably put it in the category of valuation. So if you go to the website, you can see I've done um, categories, which is a recent update back in, well, it was about four months ago. Um, so under financial models at the top, I've put everything into bulk discounts by volume. Like you buy a certain number of mid-level or intermediate or upper tier models um, or all the models and get uh, discounted prices. Um, and mid-level, intermediate, upper tier just refers to the price. It doesn't refer to the complexity or the value or, or it kind of represents value, but it doesn't really apply to the complexity it's just what i think uh, the price should be or how much they should be priced at all the other bulk uh, discount i built was all of these categories which you can see each category as you scroll down here i've put all the templates into a category and given that category itself a uh, bulk price so i probably i'm not going to raise the price at uh what this goes in and it's going to go into the all valuation models for $65, so if you buy that, um, let's see, it's down here. It'll be with the uh, EBITDA multiple valuation and Gordon growth model, which they have some similar concepts. So this will be another new concept to put into there. And the nice thing is all of my industry basic, industry specific financial models, except for maybe I think one or two are all have monthly cash flow. So the this template I've been talking about here today is going to be applicable to all of these and basically any financial model that has monthly cash flows. So the goal is here to make a universal, um, make it as universal as possible. 
uh, and you can do a monthly discounted cash flow analysis here. Uh, I guess that's about it. I will see you guys on the next one.